Hello and welcome to our first online learning lesson. Uh, one of my favorite units in the paper one for biology, unit B3, which is called infection and response. Very topical for these times. Our first lesson is going to be on pathogens. By the end of the lesson, we should be able to recall what a communicable disease is, describe the four different types of pathogens, and explain how each of those pathogens can cause disease. First off, what is a communicable disease? The whole unit is about communicable diseases and how to fight them. Uh, in unit B2, you learned about non-communicable diseases, so you could naturally think that a communicable disease is going to be something that is different. So these come up in unit B2. And just as a hint, some non-communicable diseases that you learned about in B2 included cancer and type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes actually comes up in unit B5 as well. So something that comes up on quite a different number of units. Have a think about what those could be. Communicable diseases are diseases that can spread between people. So you can catch it from somebody else. And the key word that we're looking for here is that it's caused by pathogens. And that's the title of the lesson. So we're obviously going to be talking about those more. Non-communicable diseases, like the ones that we talked about, cancer and type 2 diabetes, are diseases that are not spread between people. And again, you would have seen those in unit B2, and some of them come up again in unit B5. So naturally, the next question is, what is a pathogen? And a pathogen is a microorganism that causes disease. Microorganisms, as you can tell from the name, micro are very, very small. An organism just means a living thing. So they are very small living things. There are four microorganisms that you need to know about on the AQA GCSE exam specification. Before we move on, it'd be good for you to have a think and see what you could come up with. One of them is pretty much constantly in the news, so it should be easy to come up with, and I bet that you can come up with at least one other one. A lot of people struggle to come up with all four, so if you can, that is quite impressive. The four that you need to know about are bacteria, viruses, fungi, and protists. Some of these you will have seen in previous units. So for example, bacteria comes up in unit B1. Viruses are in the news. Obviously, COVID-19 is a particular kind of virus called a coronavirus. You've got fungi and you've got protists. All of those are pathogens that can cause disease. What is a pathogen? Sorry, what is an antigen? All cells, including pathogens, have structures on the outside of their cell membranes. These are called antigens. Super duper key word. It's going to come up again, particularly when we talk about antibodies and the immune system. Every species or strain of a pathogen, so different types of bacteria, for example, have specific antigens on its cell membrane, and those have a very specific shape. You remember that back in B2, we talked about enzymes and substrates. They fit together like a lock and a key. It's a similar thing here when we talk about antibodies, they're gonna fit onto the antigens. Just to do a little bit of drawing here, let's say that we have a pathogen, mean looking pathogen there. On the outside of the pathogen cell membrane, you're going to have little structures. These structures are called antigens, and you actually have antigens on the outside of the cell membrane of your own cells. So this particular one has a square antigen. We'll draw one of his buddies over here. They're also angry. They might have a triangle shape. Now those would be different strains. They might both be bacteria, but they're different strains of bacteria, and so they'll have different shaped antigens on the outside. Let's go through the four different types. We need to know how they cause disease. Bacteria are very, very small. They're single-celled organisms that can reproduce really quickly, roughly every 20 minutes under ideal conditions. That process is called binary fission. 
and it's literally where the bacteria is going to split into two. So if we have a bacteria here, that bacteria is going to split through binary fission into two bacteria. Once those bacteria grow a bit, they can each split into another two bacteria. All of those bacteria are going to be genetically identical. Um, so one bacteria can make a whole bunch of bacteria really, really quickly. Bacteria are prokaryotes. That's a word that you saw in the beginning of unit B1. Prokaryotes are very different than eukaryotes. You and I are eukaryotes. Bacteria are prokaryotes. That means they don't have a nucleus. It means they don't have organelles like mitochondria. They're very, very different to, uh, to us. The way that bacteria cause disease is by releasing toxins. And toxins, as you can tell from the name, are toxic. And what they do is they poison your cells, tissues, and organs. The bacteria doesn't know that you're there. The bacteria doesn't care that you're there. The bacteria is just living its best life inside of you. And as part of living that best life, it's going to release waste products. Just like you released waste products and I released waste products, the bacteria is going to be doing that. The problem is for pathogenic bacteria, those are bacteria that cause disease, those metabolic waste products are actually bad for us. They're toxic. And that's how bacteria cause disease. Viruses, on the other hand, are completely different. So bacteria are living things, but viruses aren't actually living things. What they are is essentially some genetic information, either DNA or RNA, that's surrounded by some protein. And the way that viruses reproduce is actually by taking over a host cell. So what they do is they have these almost needle structures on them, and they will inject their genetic information into the cell of the organism that they're infecting. That genetic information gets incorporated into the chromosome of that cell and tricks the cell into actually making more copies of the genetic information and more copies of the protein capsule that goes around it. So very, very quickly, the, back, uh, the cell that has the virus inside of it will start to make loads and loads and loads and loads of viruses until it gets to the point where there's so many viruses inside that the cell will actually burst. The cell breaks open, the viruses leave the broken cell and go on and infect other things. So the way that viruses cause disease is act by actually destroying your cells as they reproduce. When we talk about medicines that can be used to treat viruses, it's really tricky because the viruses for a lot of their existence are actually inside the human being's cells. So the only way to really get to some of the viruses is by destroying the cells. And that's why antiviral drugs are so difficult and tricky to find without having things that will actually cause damage to humans. Fungi or a fungus, uh, sometimes single-celled, sometimes multi-celled organisms. They are eukaryotes, so just like us, we share that in common with them. And most of them produce a structure called a hyphae, which is a thread-like structure that actually pierces cells um, either of plants or animals, and that's what causes the disease. A bunch of fungi reproduce through spores, and they release those spores uh, into the air, and they can spread really, really far, really, really quickly. The last type of pathogen that we need to know is a protist. Protists are eukaryotes. They're usually single-celled, and they're often a parasite. And what a parasite is is an organism that lives inside another organism, um, and causes damage, causes uh, disease to that organism. They often have a life cycle that will involve a bunch of different species, and those different species are often called vectors. That word's going to come up importantly. And what they do is they destroy cells and tissues as part of their life cycle. Spoiler alert, the only protist that you need to learn about for the AQA GCSE spec is malaria. And most of you probably already know that malaria is passed by mosquitoes to humans. So the uh, protist that causes malaria, Plasmodium vivax, actually lives part of its life inside the mosquito. And then when the mosquito bites a person, it puts that uh, protist into the person and it lives the rest of its life cycle in the person. And then the next mosquito that come and feeds, it will take up essentially the, the baby or immature versions of it. Our outcomes were to recall what a communicable disease is. You need to be able to say what the four types of pathogens are and talk about how, how all four of them cause disease. Uh, Going to leave you some research homework in the, the notes here. 
um, that I'd like you to do before the next one, and that's going to be to look up uh, the information on the different diseases you need to know from the AQA GCSE spec. So I've already told you that the only protest one that you need is malaria. There are three virus viral diseases, two bacterial diseases, and a fungal disease. It's not athlete's foot. It used to be athlete's foot that people would talk about. Athlete's foot is a communicable disease caused by a fungus. Uh, it's a different one that affects plants. So if you look, you'll see the names of the diseases, and I'd like you to go on the internet and do a little bit of research before the next lesson. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.